Hi guys, welcome to your weekly chaplaincy update. So this has been a historic week with the inauguration of a new president of the United States and also of the first woman and the first person of colour to hold the office of vice president. It was only a couple of weeks prior that the US Capitol faced insurrection. The world watched with bated breath and exhaled a sigh of relief on Wednesday when power was transferred peacefully, democracy intact. Many of you may have watched the ceremony, complete with mu musical performances from Lady Gaga and Jennifer Lopez. But for me, it was the poetry of Amanda Gorman that stood out and stole the show. At just 22 years old, Amanda is the youngest ever inaugural poet, and her poem, The Hill We Climb, speaks of hope and healing for a divided and fractured America. Yet there are themes in her poem which we can all relate to. She speaks of a never-ending shade, a sea we must wade. And if that doesn't sum up the feeling of living through a pandemic, then I'm not sure what does. In a powerful and moving line, she writes, We learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always justice. This reminded me of the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who we also remembered on Monday. He famously said, True peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. These two prophetic voices challenge us not to accept the status quo when the status quo is embedded in injustice and inequality. inequality. Earlier this year at a school, we talked a lot about challenging racism and opened up a conversation about how prejudice and discrimination happen here, not just in other countries. It's so important, I think, that we continue to have these conversations and do our bit, even though those hashtags are no longer trending, Indeed, it matters now more than ever. It was the ending of Amanda Gorman's poem that resonated with me the most. She writes, quotes, when the day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we set it free. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. These words could not be more relevant, and especially for us as young people. Day will come and we will step out of the shade. We have a vaccine which is being distributed across the country right at this very moment, and an end to the cycle of lockdowns is in sight. And as we move out of the pandemic, we understandably will all be wanting to get back to normal. But which bits of normal do we actually want to keep? Perhaps this is a moment for us to think about what sort of world we want to live in and to build back better. Perhaps we can build a new normal where people are all a bit kinder, where all key workers are paid a living wage, where prejudice is no longer tolerated and no child goes hungry. If we are to make that a reality, then we all have a role to play. And I think that a big part of growing up is figuring out which role it is that you want to play. So I want to return to that final line. For there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. There is always hope and light to be found, even in hard times, but sometimes we have to make a conscious effort to look for it, and sometimes that light has to shine through us and through our actions. But being the light can be intimidating and even a little scary when the problems that the world faces seem huge. It's tempted to think, how could I possibly make a difference? And in this week's Year 9 Days of Reflection, we'll be thinking a bit about calling how to be the change that we want to see in the world. But for now, I would like to end with this thought. We can all make a difference, but no one can save the world on their own. We are all in this together. So rather than overwhelming yourself with things that you are powerless to control, think about what it is that you can influence. Is there a small act of goodness that you can do this week, this month or this year? Perhaps it's calling an isolated grandparent more frequently, or fundraising for a charity at school, or even having conversations over this year to raise awareness of an issue that you care about. I think if we can all think of one small concrete action that we can do this year to help others, then as a school community we can make a big difference and truly say that together we are brave enough to be the light. So thank you for listening, I hope that's given you some food for thought. Um, and have a fantastic week. Take care.